know, and I'm, I feel, I feel terrible. I just, I never, never considered it. I never thought that there would, it, this would ever happen to us. There's really no excuse for not checking the life of your battery in your smoke detector. There's even a new smoke detector, which you can test with a flashlight that will immediately tell you if the battery is still working. To survive the deadly smoke and gases in a fire, you must have a smoke detector. The more the better, at least one on every level of your home. And you've got to check and change your batteries regularly, or all the smoke detectors in the world won't afford you any protection. When it comes to dealing with deadly heat, you can take a lesson from firefighters. They live with it at each fire. All right, moving in. Let's go. Keep moving. 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 Get down. Get down. Unlike the movies, firefighters do not race through burning buildings. They spend their time on their bellies, on their hands, on their knees. They crawl even with all their protective gear. The heat at head level can spell death, so they must stay low. They're trained to make it second nature to crawl, or any fire they go to could be their last. Because down on the floor, not only will you see better, but the temperatures that would kill you if you were standing are survivable down on the floor. How dramatic are the temperature differences? I went into the specially designed training room where temperatures on the floor were 90 degrees. At head height, a blistering 600 degrees. The ceiling even hotter. Instant death if you stand up. Because remember, we said before, temperatures of 150 degrees or higher knock you out and kill you. And even a small fire can heat a room to that within a minute or two. When you're trapped in a burning building, remember the rule. The rule is to crawl. Don't stand up. The heat overhead is several hundred degrees. It will kill you. It's not the fact that you can't see. And should you stand up, the smoke will knock you unconscious almost within seconds. So crawl. Right now, there's a little smoke here at the bottom. Eyes are tearing. <coughs> We're getting a little sore throat out of this. But the heat overhead, if I were to stand up right now, would knock me back and probably kill me. The bottom line is that you have to stay low. You must crawl to safety. Heat kills. You can buy life-saving time by crawling. And there are some other things that will also buy you time in a fire. The smoke alarm is sounding. There's a fire somewhere in the basement. The thick, blinding, choking smoke is rolling through these hallways and into rooms. You've got to get out alive. And in order to do that, you need to buy time. And there are two facts you must know in order to buy time. The biggest mistake that you can possibly make when a fire breaks out is to think that you have time. But time in a fire really works against you. You have no time. And most people who die in fires die in the very first five minutes. They are trapped because they wasted time. There are two things that can help you buy time in a fire. And knowing them could save your life. If you have a fire extinguisher, how much time should you spend in fighting a fire? Rule one is simple. You have 30 seconds to put out the fire if you're right there when it starts with a fire extinguisher in hand. That's all the time you have. So, if you're watching television and smoke and flame suddenly break out, you have 30 seconds to grab a fire extinguisher and put the fire out. If you can't control it in 30 seconds, get out. This fire could get out of control in seconds and you're trapped. But never waste time looking for a fire that's already underway in some other part of the house. Use what little time is left to you. Get you and your family out alive as quickly as possible and call for help. And last, have an escape plan. Now that sounds easy, but believe me it isn't. Right after the broadcast, try this. Find a room, your favorite room that you know intimately. Now, with the help of a partner or by yourself, close your eyes, turn around several times. Now, with your eyes closed, get down on the floor. You have an escape plan. Try to find your way out with your eyes closed. See how long it takes you. Now, remember, this is an imaginary fire. In a real fire, this is what you'll have to contend with. There'll, there'll be obstacles in your way. You have to know where to go. The smoke is black, it's blinding and it's choking. But I, I know where the escape plan takes me, along the wall. I've rehearsed this many times, 
you must do the same thing. The kitchen should be just here, yes. Here it is, linoleum floor, carpeting. This is the kitchen. The exact, the exit is just 10 feet ahead along the side wall here. I can't see it yet. It's still too black and the heat has got me down on the floor, so crawl. There's the exit. Now I can get out. You must have that escape plan and you must rehearse it. So we've